Welcome to The Faith Alive, a series from the Diocese of Harrisburg that explores and explains the teachings of the Catholic faith. During the Sacrament of Confirmation, we receive the seven gifts of God the Holy Spirit. From these gifts, we also receive the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. These fruits come from the Holy Spirit, and as they impact the way a person in the state of grace lives their life, are sometimes thought to be evidence that the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we'll cover in later episodes, are alive in a person's soul. We actually read about the fruits in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians in chapter 5. As a confirmed person, we also believe that the graces we receive from the Holy Spirit will help us to grow in holiness and that these fruits will also grow in us over time. So, what are these fruits? Today we're going to focus on the first five of the nine. The first fruit is love. We say, of course, that God is love. And the great commandment that he has given us is to love God above all else and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so this love is, is this increased gift, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit's power works in us to fulfill that great commandment and to be more and more in the image of Christ, in the incarnate love of God. In Greek, there are four different words for love. We just have one word. We, we love God. We love our parents. We love our children. We also love ice cream and apple pie and our pets. So we use that one word that covers all different kind of levels of the reality of love. But the Greeks were much more uh, specific uh, it, with four different words at least. And, and, and the first word is eros which we get the word erotic from. That's a, a self-interested love. I, I love you for what I get out of it. Um, the, the second word is storge, and that's um, familial love. It's the love between um, family members, uh, a, a self-giving love. It's more interested in, in the others. A and then there's the word philos, with Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. Well, philos is the, the love of a friend. Um, someone, uh, I'm, it's a more mutual there, I, I, I give and I receive. And finally, the fourth word, which when we read the New Testament in English, we hear the word love a lot and almost all the time, it's this fourth Greek word, agape. Agape is a totally other-centered love with no self-interest at all. It's the highest form of love. It's an interest in the other person given freely and not interested in what do I get out of this? How will this benefit me? Am I being treated fairly? That's the love that is the fruit of God, the Holy Spirit. The Spirit works upon us to mature us in that kind of love so that we become more and more in the image of Christ who loved that way, who loves us and went to his death on the cross, suffered as he did, uh, because he totally loved us without any self-interest. That's the agape love that is the fruit of God the Holy Spirit. The, the second fruit that we should consider is called joy. And we know what joy is, we are joyful at certain times, but human joy, natural joy, is something that comes to us when we're in happy circumstances. Uh, it, it's a feeling that I have when things are going well. Uh, this is not the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Joy comes from our close relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is the bond of love between the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit brings us more and more to appreciate the closeness of God in our lives, no matter what circumstances we might find ourselves in. And so the Holy Spirit calls us to uh, speak the truth, to be honest, to be persons of integrity in our relationships, to be able to endure hardships, um, 
all of these things, no matter what's going on around us, there's an abiding joy in our heart. Not a natural joy, but a supernatural joy, which is the fruit of God the Holy Spirit. You know, there's an amazing passage in the Acts of the Apostles that always, always intrigues me. And it's, it's after the apostles were arrested and they were, they were uh, punished and, and uh, uh, scourged. And it said the apostles rejoiced that they were able to suffer for the sake of Christ. Well, I don't think we generally rejoice when we're suffering, but this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the joy that comes not from our circumstances, but from knowing that God is in control and he's with us in every situation. The third of these nine fruits of God, the Holy Spirit, is peace. Did you ever notice, especially as we just celebrated the uh, Feast of Easter and the Gospels for the uh, the days after Easter and the following Sunday, especially when our Lord appears to his apostles in the gospels, his greeting to them is peace. Peace be with you. It's the greeting that the bishop is privileged to be able to use uh, as an image of the risen Christ at the beginning of every mass. I can say peace be with you instead of the Lord be with you or one of the other greetings. It's, it's reminiscent of the Lord's greeting to his friends uh, on uh, Easter night. So this peace has to do with the well-being, the total well-being that comes about when the Holy Spirit dwells uh, within us. Um, that word shalom that we use was a very typical and still is today in Israel, a, a Jewish greeting. And that's the word that our Lord probably would have used when he said peace be with you. And it doesn't simply mean that everything's okay and I'm, I'm in a good place, uh, but it means that all of the relationships in my life, all of the ways in which I can be measured, I measure up. Uh, things are in a harmony uh, with me. That's, that's the piece. It doesn't, again, come from my circumstances. Uh, it's something that abides within me through the indwelling of God, the Holy Spirit. And all is right because my relationships are in a just condition. I'm, I'm giving and receiving as I ought to. And I recognize um, my dependence upon God and my dependence upon others. And this harmony, this deep harmony is, is situated within me, not in the circumstances around me. That's the peace that is the fruit of God the Holy Spirit. The fourth fruit of God the Holy Spirit that we need to consider is called patience. We all talk about the virtue of patience. Some have it and some don't have it, but I'm not simply talking about that personality trait that we may have or that we say, well, I'm going to work on my patience for Lent, but this really is a disposition that is instilled in us and that grows in us again by the power of God, the Holy Spirit. That an infant is someone who wants what it wants when it wants it. There's no delaying that. I want it now, whatever it is. Uh, and some people go through life never getting out of that kind of infant's attitude. But the sign of a mature human person is someone who is able to delay satisfaction. We can defer what we want uh, when we want it and, and wait for it, wait for the right time, the right moment to act or not act, to receive what it is that we're interested in. And this is the, the Christian disposition of patience that comes from the Holy Spirit. It begins, I think, in the recognition that God is in control and I'm not. And so I'm able to wait for God's time, for the right season according to God's calendar and not my own. And so there's this willingness to defer and to be uh, open to whatever it is that God allows to develop without inserting my control uh, without expressing anger, without expressing um, uh, any of my uh, desires. Um, th this is, is the disposition, the fruit of the Holy Spirit that we know 
as patients. The fifth and the final fruit of the Holy Spirit that we're going to consider in this session is the fruit of kindness. Kindness, I think, is born of the ability to recognize Christ in every other person, to see the presence of Christ and treat that person accordingly. I see you, and maybe I'm not even totally happy with what you're saying or doing, but I'm seeing beyond you to recognize that Christ is present in you. And I respond to the presence of Christ in, in that, um, well, polite, respectful way. And that becomes that disposition from the empowerment of God, the Holy Spirit, that we know as, as kindness. The qualities would be someone who is a very considerate person, who, who anticipates the needs of others. And she or he is a, is a, a very caring or, or helpful person. They have a, a positive uh, attitude and, and try to affirm and support uh, the people who are around them. Um, that, I believe, is the way we, we show uh, the fruit of kindness by our, by our actions. Um, we, we reach out without many times being asked, but anticipate uh, what someone might need, and we respond to it um, proactively. Um, that's a positive uh, action and attitude um, that is evidence that the fruit of kindness is maturing uh, in our minds and hearts. So that concludes the five fruits of God the Holy Spirit that we wanted to consider uh, in this session. Thank you for joining me today, and until the next time, may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. <music>